live here at the station of decapitation with hot your head i'm nasty neil i'm treacherous trista and we're joined by the fine people here of immortal which comes out september september 8th we have uh, co-director producer rob margolis chelsea uh lindsey mushet well uh, joe who is uh jason stewart hey man and ted Toddy todd good to have everybody here and uh tristan i really love the movie it's really unique and uh stands out and uh it's really about a lot of uh, uh thought-provoking themes and uh for people who aren't aware yet could you just give them an idea of what the movie's about sure it's about like um, ordinary people who realize they can't die um that's the general sense of it four-part anthology film like black mirror um all twist endings yeah i was going to compare it to black mirror because you know it's uh, very similar to uh because it makes you really think, which which I like. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, how did everyone get involved? What what what, inter what uh you know interested everybody? We'll start with Tony. Uh, my good friend Robbie Bryant brought this project that Rob was producing to my attention. Robbie and I had done two films prior, Man from Earth and I Murders, and I trust his judgment. I read it, and it struck a chord. Were you always going to play the role that you played? uh yeah <laughs> well, i don't know if you maybe that's you just a, read no, the script the, you liked it wasn't and, like you know. a grab bag they said tony wants you to do ted and i said yeah fuck oh. yeah i love not only my segment i love all the segments mm -hmm. and how they sort of accordion into each other yeah. you know everybody i think like you know there's other actors here but i think everybody was really committed and wanted to do something special mm -hmm. we had like four days to shoot each segment so oh really oh yeah. we'll get into that uh jason how did you get involved well, I had seen that it was being cast and I looked up, John DeBach play, uh, directed my section and I'd seen it was being cast and I just looked up his work on the internet. I looked that he had had a website and that he had directed this comedy before. It was a comedy drama and I saw that he liked people that were known for comedy and I had been known for comedy somewhat in my career. I also do stand up. And uh, he seemed to be casting people in roles that they weren't exactly right for, which I love. You know, and that's what I think is so cool about this movie. It's people playing parts that you wouldn't necessarily see them in. So you don't see anything coming. And uh, I love that. So I sent him a note through the website and sent him a demo reel. And I guess a couple of days later, he I sent an email and said, we'd love to hire you for the film. We're gonna to talk to your agent tomorrow. They talked to my agent. Three days later, I was doing the movie. And three days later, he sent me a rough cut of the scene. He says, oh, you know, actors don't often get to get their scenes. I know you were putting together a new demo reel. I thought maybe you'd like a couple minutes from this. And I thought, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> you know, who, this doesn't happen. You know, you're in, I'm sure Tony and, and Lindsay know that sometimes we have to go to get a scene from a movie, sometimes from somebody, it's like, you know, it's like surgery. <laughs> you know, sometimes for some people. And uh, these guys have been just fabulous from day one. I so enjoyed playing the part you know, and so enjoyed the whole process. Uh, Lindsay, how did you get involved? I was um, called in for an audition. I met um, Rob, or my, he directed Chelsea, which is my portion. And um, I was called in and I really, uh, I identified with the part a lot just because primarily my athletic background. I'm also a, a stunt woman too. And I played collegiate mm -hmm. soccer. So Chelsea's a, a runner. And that was, mm -hmm. that was really exciting for me to get, called in for a part that I could identify with in that way. Yeah. And, and, and I will say she beat over like a hundred other like uh, um, women for, for that role. And uh, it was like a no brainer when she auditioned, but just knew it. Yeah. Well, what, what was it like about the about her? Um, just like her, her natural like a vulnerability, just like a, I think everyone else that auditioned, like I just felt like, you know, it wasn't a hundred percent like as authentic as it was when Lindsay brought her home mm -hmm. in that audition room. Yeah. Yeah. And how early were you involved, Rob? Because, you know, it's written by John. Uh, I was involved before it was even written. I remember like, oh, okay. uh, like uh, a couple, a few years ago now, whatever, before, yeah, John just calls me. He's like, hey, I got this idea for like this four part like anthology series. And like, um, and like, um, basically like, you know, um, Tom and Danny, the other two directors um, were like looking for like, you know, John like edits and shoots and doesn't so much work so fast 
they were like, you know, looking to like work with John to like, um, to, to do like, you know, short films. And I'm always telling John, like, you know, let's just do features. We can like, you know, sell them, make money on them and really promote them. So John goes and he's like, well, like, what if we do like a feature film that's like four short films, like an anthology. So he got Danny and Tom to like, you know, like, you know, self-finance their chapters. And John's like, well, if I can find the money for my chapter, will you find the money for your chapter? I was like, yeah, I guess that's something I'll do. And there you go. You have like a full funded like feature right there. Wow. When you do it that way with like separate directors, sometimes you could tell that they don't connect like very well because like, they are made by a different, you know, uh, crew. So yeah. uh, how did you go about that to make sure, you know, because they seem like they're all, you know, made by the same people, you know, they have yeah. like in the same universe. Um, same um, writer, editor, John, and the same DP, Tom Colley, who also is the director of uh, Tony's chapter, um, mm -hmm. Ted and Mary. So like uh, we had like a lot of like, you know, overlaps and the same composer as well throughout all four of them. So we had a lot of like, you know, technical overlaps to sort of maintain a consistency. How about the order? Um, is there, what's a the thought there? Like which order are you going to put the, the stories in? Yeah, um, initially um, the Chelsea chapter and the Warren chapter were, were switched and the Chelsea chapter was the end of the movie with uh, Lindsay and Dylan Baker. And then Warren with Jason and uh, Sam Levine was the opening chapter. But um, just like for pacing and like um, the purposes of like um, just with Dylan um, on Hunters now, and like many different reasons. And I guess like uh, we just decided to, to switch um, those two chapters. And um, I guess it's, it's, it's worked better for us just to for keep me, like, all the mystery going, for, you know? For me, that really works because the opening of the Chelsea episode, uh, yeah. when he's uh, he has the lesson about allegory, I oh, think yeah. that really sets up the whole movie. And uh, plus that scene, I, I love that it's very long. I don't want, that's not a negative at all. Cause I think a lot of movies, maybe that would be edited down. But it goes on a long time, and it really, uh, I thought it was fascinating to uh, listen to uh, Dylan Baker, you know, play a character and yeah. you know, allegory. Yeah, and... real joy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to lie. I spent, like, a days upon days trying to cut, like, 30 seconds a minute out of that scene. It's, like, racking my brain. And I cut some stuff, and I put it back in because I missed yeah, it. Yeah, you didn't. And I just didn't really cut much from it. Yeah. Yeah. And as a horror fan, it's something I talk about. I think, uh, you know, within that seg that part, like, why, why are we drawn to the villains in stories? Which, yeah, uh, I found very interesting. And um, I just, one of my favorite things about it is the fact that I gave Tony an opportunity to, to, to not necessarily play a villain and to instead yeah, play true. one of the most lovable men like ever, in my opinion, um, which he nails. Like, oh, every yeah, time, Tony. Every, every time. You really, you really had me uh, tearing up. Well, that whole segment, both you and then Robin, it really had me tearing up in the, the dialogue and everything. Yeah, yeah Robin, every time it kills me. Robin was great to work with. You know, an actor's dream is to show up on set. And not only are you prepared, but the other person is even more prepared than you are. And all you have to do is just to let it go and let it flow. We also made sure, I talked to Tom, had a lunch meeting with him, and I made sure that we had two days of extra rehearsals before we even started shooting. So yeah. I can kill all of those things. One beautiful thing about this whole group was everybody was present for everybody else's segments, at least yeah. directors, writers, and producers. They were all helping out each other on the project. So I think that's why the whole thing seems seamless. Mm -hmm. Had you yeah. worked with Robin before? No, never. hadn't met her. It was the first uh -huh. time. I knew her from the New York theater, which I was heavily involved in. So, you know, it was just moment to moment. Yeah, because there's yeah. a lot of chemistry there. I mean, you were, you know, you know, a short segment, but you still, you uh, believe that, you know, th that there's a backstory here. Obviously, that they're a couple and they've had years. Sometimes together. you have to work for it, and sometimes your partner makes it easy. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah. Uh, for for you, Lindsay, what? Oh, go on, sorry. Rob. Just to say, I just want to say officially, Tony, I thought it was extraordinary work. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of the couple. Nothing. Was, no, I love the idea that it's a black and white couple, and nobody says anything about no, it. It's just, never mentioned. <laughs> it, it's so. It's so. What? What? That's the way more powerful. I think yeah. it is because it's. It's. It's the movies are now catching up to the world and life, okay. and, and politics. And politics. Yeah, you can see that these people had been together for a long time, and I was. I was so moved by it as I was by the. Uh, the, the frighteningness of uh, of uh, uh, Lindsay's segment. Oh my God! Because you know, I I hadn't seen anything when I went to the. We were all fresh. 
yeah, the Scream yeah. Film Festival. So we all sort of met each other there. And it yeah. was like, oh my God, I'm in a really great movie. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was a movie about a guy who sold spy equipment. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were you were surpri- you're pleasantly surprised. You weren't. Where's, oh, where's yeah, all the spy the, espionage going on? Definitely, that was the whole thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I always go in with that idea, honestly, when I'm doing a movie, no matter what size my part is, that I, how it revolves around the character and how I can As you should. support the director's vision. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Lindsay, what was it like uh, working with uh, Dylan? Um, Dylan is so, so special. He's become um, just a mentor to me, having met on that, on that project. He's, uh, his work is so extraordinary and so specific. And he has this way of making choices that are not what you would expect. Like if you read the script, you know, and, and it's a great, it's a wonderful script. And then when you have Dylan adding his touches, delivering the script, it's, um, it's exciting. And it brings like, Tony was talking about being moment to moment. You cannot help when you're in a room with Dylan or in a scene with Dylan, but be moment to moment with him. So for me, you know, kind of in the early, uh, you know, I'm kicking off my career, really, that was just such a such a treat for me to have this framework that you know, these, he's really making these pillars and then I got to play within those. And he would give me little tips too. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but he, in between takes, he would, uh, he, he would help teach me a few of his tricks too, which was really fun. And um, I'll yeah. leave it at that for now. Since you brought up it's kickstarting your career, like, you know, I've seen your IMDb and you've been in a lot of things, but relatively young. And, uh, you know, to work with a veteran actor like that, I, I assume, uh, it makes you step up your game and you just learn, you know, uh, just working with them. Totally. And it made me be really accountable to my work too. You know, I always do my homework, but when you know, um, I, like I said, I'm, I have an athletic background and when you know you're stepping on the field or when you're stepping on set with someone of that caliber, then um, there's a, a way that I knew I needed to, to show up and, and be ready for him also out of respect. And the same with mm-hmm. Rob too. Rob's a wonderful director and, um, works very specifically and as an actor you have to come uh, with a certain amount of preparation to, to be able to deliver. I feel like that's what separates who makes it and who doesn't make it you know just the, the work ethic. Yeah. Was there a reason you picked that episode to direct? Or were you uh, that episode directed on a camera? Mainly because uh, I, I loved it um, and Tom was like so set on like the Ted and Mary chapter and John was so set on like Warren and like um, Danny, the other director, he really wanted Gary and Vanessa. So it just like, it really just fell into my lap. That like, mm-hmm. basically like my personal favorite one was the one that I ended up with. And like, I didn't have a choice at the end of the day. Like, um, in fact, John actually had another chapter that he wrote that made the cutting room floor. And like, um, I was like, we were trying to find another director and I wasn't gonna direct any of them actually. I was just gonna produce the entire thing and not direct it. Um, and like, we just, I was like, we wanted to make something else. Like, uh, I wanted something bigger and better. Um, I felt like the fourth one that was never filmed wasn't chosen for a reason. And I was like, John, how about this? Write another one and make it like the best one possible. And let's just try to get like, you know, let's just make, let's just, you have three amazing ones here. Let's write one more. That's like amazing. So we did it. And I was like, well, now you wrote it and I just love it. And whether it's the best one or not, I want to direct this one. And that was basically it, to be honest with you. Yeah. 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 You know, when we were both watching it, uh, Trista and I, um, I texted her when I saw the Ted and Mary epi- uh, segment, and I was like, this is like a Greek tragedy, like, you know, when you see it all played out at the very end. Yeah. And, and uh, um, Jason said that, like, uh, you know, uh, people played against, like, uh, type, and uh, I thought the they really captured Tony's sad eyes, because I think Tony has very expressive eyes, and mm-hmm. they really came through in that episode. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And there's a lot of, uh, um, I know it's acting, but is there anything you're drawing from when you're playing that? Do you have an experience similar to similar to this at all? Talking to me? Yeah, Tony, sorry. Uh, well, you know, I come from the theater, man. So, you know, everything you do on stage is based on some part of your life. You know, you don't want to give away all the goodies, but yeah, I had a lot mm-hmm. to work with, you know? Mm-hmm. you know? And also, you know, full disclosure, I was a cancer survivor, so... I that, that really popped out to me. So thank God for that and fuck cancer. Yeah. 
Yeah. The, the, a lot of this, the themes and the, I'm sorry, uh, go on, Jason. No, I want to give a shout out to, to Sam Levine because yeah, I got this so quickly. So I, and the only thing it said in the script, it said two things about the character. Uh, one that he uh, had a low voice and one that he was very um, intimidating. And I had just come off of working on uh, Birth of a Nation, Nate Parker's project with Army Hammer and I played a plantation owner in 1831. So I, th so I'd started to play in the last number of years, I played a lot more villains and been there, done there kind of acts. So I created this sort of thing in my voice when I was talking to him. And I just sort of lowered my voice in that and had been working on that for like probably just so I'd have that variability. And Tony being from the theater certainly understand it doesn't come to you always like that. It took me around 10 years to be able to have that ability to, to change who I am and change my persona. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, what I loved about um, Sam was that I wasn't completely sure when I got in how I was gonna play this, but I had my idea of what I wanted in the scene, how I was gonna go about it. And when he came in, it just changed by the, just the listening, his presence, his reactions, his uh, support, his kindness and generosity. That's how my performance came because I basically talked for five or six minutes. I mean, which is a long time for a character actor to speak in a movie, usually. And uh, John was so wonderful because he directed my segment and he was so wonderful because at the end we had done it and I said, there's a speech where I, there's this laundry list speech that I tell about what I did. And I found that the hardest, it's always the hardest, information is always the hardest to do. I don't know if you guys, how you feel about that, but it's like, it, mm -hmm. I did it and I thought, he said, no, that was great. I said, you know, I think I can do it better. He said, no, no, that was really great. I said, can I do it one more time? He said, yes. And he said, yeah, you're right, that was better. <laughs> <laughs> so he was open to the idea and I just know that as I become a man of a certain age, that to go with your gut. And when there are people there that support that and give you, you know, five more minutes, you know, uh, it was sort of, that really, really moved me. And also uh, gave me the opportunity to give a better performance, I thought. And that's the take he used too. Great. Uh, uh, Trissa, do you have a question? I do, yeah. So I am also a huge fan of this anthology, I thought. All the chapters were profound and surprising and, and um, thoughtful and well executed. So thank you for that. My question is also about the Ted and Mary chapter. Um, I'm wondering if there were any concerns about the politics. No, no, no. Actors have to be fearless. I mean, if we were to censor ourselves, then we wouldn't have great plays like, you know, angels over America or, you know, writers, actors, producers have to be fearless. So no, that was the last thing on my mind. What we were celebrating was every single moment that we had together. You know, that's what was important. Um, as a cancer survivor, because um, I've, I've had uh, not cancer, but I've had uh, a lot of uh, health problems the last few years. Uh -huh. and, um, you're well. So I was connected to this. I had 14 okay. inches in my colon removed. And, um, oh, there you go. I had the same type. So there you go. The um, And you know, once you have any kind of life-threatening thing like that, nothing in the world matters. And you have a greater appreciation and, that's what I was gonna, and, yeah. and support from other people and just more giving person. Yeah, I was gonna, that's kind of what I was going to ask was I think a, part of the theme of the movie in a way is like uh, near-death experiences challenges you and, and changes you. Absolutely. Anybody who hasn't been there, wait until you do face the wall. It's the immediacy of the moment. That's what I felt the whole film has this, this is happening right now. This has to be, this decision has to be made. And that's the, in, in, in all four segments, that's something that I thought was pretty wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's also uh, more of a, not as a comical way, but it's also, because uh, the movie's called Immortal, and it's ki it kind of deals with the, the boredom of, uh, if you were immortal, what, what do you do with your time? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Welcome yeah, to COVID. COVID. <laughs> 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 very, very true, very topical, yeah. Yes. What do we do? Yeah. Well, the Warren chapter explores that, like the boredom of it. 
the other chapters. Well, actually, I'm not going to give Chelsea it away. does too, you know. In a oh, that's too, true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not give it away. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to talk about with a with yeah, a without it away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it is the best when possible to go into a movie without knowing too much about it. Especially, uh, this I know movie. it's kind of hard, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you'll enjoy it. But it was, yeah. yeah, what has the feedback been like so far? Um, just like a, my favorite thing is to like for the film festivals and everything else. Um, I used to go to like the first row for all of them. And like a lot of them were like, you know, very crowded audiences and just watching the reaction when like people see like the endings, um, especially Tony's chapter. Like when people like see the end result, just seeing everyone just gasp. I just love that. It's so gratifying. And so thank you, Tony, for making everyone yeah. gasp in a very different way than you're used to making people gasp. Yeah. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> Treasure trove. Yeah. I interviewed Tony uh, years ago at a convention and he taught and you talked about uh, your aunt was like, I think it was your aunt, was yes. your big um, reason why you became an actor. And yeah. at the time you always wanted to uh, play in, in a Western. Have you have you had the chance to do that? Oh yeah. Oh no. Wasn't wasn't we down in uh, Florida when we met? What was that? I was in Boston. Boston. Near Boston, Worcester. Okay, Worcester. So it's rock and shock. Rock and uh, shock. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been. You know, I've done. I just did Badlands, which is on Netflix. I think it was oh, in the. Yeah, that's right. Movie. Actually, yeah, I did the interviews for that. Yeah. And I did Black Fox, a miniseries about the first black federal marshal in this country. That was Chris mm -hmm. Reeve. So yeah, I've got my Western fix. <laughs> What's right. left is an astronaut, what every little boy my age wanted to be. <laughs> cool. Have you ever shot a gun, Tony? In real life or? No, 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 in the movies, in the movies. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Oh, I, got, I got to shoot a gun for the first time and then they cut it, but I still got to shoot oh. it. It scared me to death, I thought. Oh, yeah, it's not something that actors normally, you know, walk around, we're not bookies, right? So. <laughs> I actually got to shoot guns in a movie too and I was surprised how heavy they were. Yeah. Yeah. If I see an actor oh, carrying yeah. gun off. If I see an actor carrying gun off set, I'm going to run away and scream. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, besides astronaut or something, Tony, I know you must get offered a lot of roles. What's like your thought process and what you uh, what you accept? What do you look for in a role? I just want to be surprised by a project. You know, we get a lot of stuff, and we just make sure that each role is different from the last one. So, fortunately, 2019 was a great year until we all got interrupted by, you know, whatever we're being interrupted by. And, uh, so thank God. And I've been able to do voiceovers during the pandemic. So that's good. Mm -hmm. well, you're a perfect person to do that. It's an amazing voice. Man, so, it I takes a long time to get into that market, but thank God we got our feet in. How does that affect the, the release of the movie? Um, is it better or worse for video on demand uh, now? Because people need things to do and you can't go to the theater for the most part just time will tell right for us at least um i hope it's uh, uh, yeah i think more people will see it honestly it's a shame but that's the way it's happening these days is that more people are tuning in on their sets and they're looking for things to watch i know how many we all have we can all just ask ourselves i go on the netflix or the amazon i go what's happening what can i see i'm always looking for things yeah. to watch yeah no. They're going to give them something fresh and new, and uh, it was a shiny coat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the good really thing about horror. Crazy. There's so many different types of horror. You know, it's uh, there's silly horror, there's gruesome horror, there's something thought provoking, and yeah, you know, I don't know if this is, you know, I guess it's a horror movie, but you know, you could put it in other genres too. Yeah, I think that it's the kind of horror that um, I'm hoping that like the like um, our publicist is getting reviewed by like a bunch of critics. So I think that they're going to take a liking to it, and hopefully, like that'll help spread the word too. Mm -hmm. Great. Great, yeah. get the word out. Yeah, we've been trying. Yeah, uh, Trista, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Trista, do you have another question? You mentioned the expediency of the shoot. I'm wondering if that's literal. Was it shot in four days? And if so, where and why and how was that? Um, each chapter was shot in three different days, so 12 days total. I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all three, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the first chapter, Chelsea, was shot in New Jersey. Uh, Monmouth County, New Jersey, um, in my actual high school that I actually grew up in, actually, believe it or not. Oh, um, wow. And then, like, uh, the rest of them were all shot. Uh, <laughs> uh, not the teachers that I went to school with, but other teachers that are in the school yeah. now. Yeah, but, yeah, and that's, that's cool. But uh, the other three chapters were shot in L.A., um, like, uh, all in the valley, like in the Van Nuys, uh, Woodland Hills area. 
all in between that area. Wow. Yeah. In my mind, the Chelsea one would take longer to shoot since there's like two big uh, places no. that takes place. I mean, if you want to know the truth, it was actually the shortest one to shoot because like a uh, half of our half of one of the three days was like rained out. So we literally just like sat there and waited for the rain to stop. So I would like to add if you're yeah. running for a lot of the movie, which I was, it felt like a very long day. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, ate, I ate a lot at that dinner that night. I worked up an appetite for sure. <laughs> it might be a weird question, there. but go on, sorry. I was only there for a day. I wanted to come back the next, but there wasn't any part for me to play. <laughs> I have one really important question that I have to ask Tony. Is that a boa next to you, or is that it? what is that next to you? That the that furry top? thing? This thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is a lamb, uh, a lamb wool like throw pillow, man. I, oh, I, I thought it was. I didn't know if it was a coat or. You know, uh, it was a well, I thought it was a boa. So I'm, <laughs> I don't know. My part next you were... role is a drag queen. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I don't know. What? I have no idea. I have a drag I queen astronaut. Looking at it's it, I'm obsessed. Uh, throw pillow, man. Fuck, since, I, I got to be comfortable doing these things. Okay? Since, since you know that I'm obsessed, ready to play, and we want to get ready for a championship. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I would write a role for you right now for a drag queen astronaut. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He goes to the I'm pool obsessed to every time stuff. I see interview shows. I'm expect what's in their house, what's that right. mirror. We're, I'm looking at you and go, oh, the guy in the news, God, he's got a great kitchen. Right, you know, right. I mean, Both of them do sit in their kitchens, don't they? Yeah, isn't it weird? I just, I'm so into, I'm so into the whole thing. I'm, what's that behind? Oh, that looks like a little piece of art. Can they go closer in on that? I want to see, right. is that on a tease? You know? Yeah, I put all this up just because we're an idiot. Yeah, so please, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, of course. All right, sorry. your excuse. <laughs> all right. I have a question for Lindsay. Um, so Lindsay, I'm an actor and I played a runner, but I'm not a runner in real life. Ah. But when I played a runner in the film, I found a very interesting connection between my breath, my breathing and <clears throat> acting. So like if I had an emotional scene, I would run around and then I would access that easier. I guess similar to like in acting, like breathing techniques and yoga and that sort of thing. Do you utilize a similar process? Absolutely. I do um, a physical and vocal warm up, like a body and a vocal warm up um, for any project that I do, but especially when the stakes are really high, which in this one, they couldn't really have been higher for Chelsea. But um, yeah, com completely. I think the, the breath is a, a source of truth and our voice um, can, it, you know, expresses that. So v very similarly, um, to what you're saying of, of getting in, in the character. And, um, you know, I had a few uh, breakdowns in between takes, trying to time things right. You know, I was very, very in my body and very uh, in my breath and having some some physical responses to that. But it was, a, you know, it was fun. It was worth it for this project. <laughs> Is, is there a difference between running for camera, like dramatic running, I guess, and uh, running for competition? Uh, we did have to get the blocking right mm -hmm. with it. So, and um, knowing what the framing was, it kind of depends uh, which parts we were doing. But there are certain scenes around the track where we would have to, um, you know, there are other runners and would time it. So I was passing them a certain way. And I would give myself a little obstacle to try and make it look authentic where I would start on my belly you know, or something like that, so that I could then um, execute what Rob was was wanting to get in in the blocking um, in that way. But other than that, I wasn't too. I, it was it was nice for me because Chelsea is such a serious athlete, so I didn't have to think quite as much how would Chelsea run because I knew she was a serious athlete and I knew I had that background, so I could be in my own physicality more in that way. Uh, <clears throat> Jason, I saw you're a comedian as well. Uh, which came first, uh, uh, dramatic acting or, or comedy? Acting always came first. I started <clears throat> in the theater and then went on to doing film and television quite a bit. I mean, I honestly couldn't get a job when I was a kid. That's why I started doing stand-up. So stand-up really created a career and, and created opportunities for me. Uh, as I went into I mean, the first 10 years of my career, no one was going to hire me. I was too different and unusual, <clears throat> I guess, for the time. And uh, I, uh, I guess the, appearing on Star Search, I think, was the big change for me. That was in the 80s. And I lost to Martin Lawrence 
I had, uh, I was wearing a zebra jacket. And, uh, <laughs> that would go really nicely with Tony's pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I wore a zebra jacket. I, I spiked in my hair and it danced in a circle because I didn't want anybody to know I was gay. And uh, that was my big joke. And it, so I, I did that show and I lost to him. When I did, I won one episode and I was so nervous. I remember on that show that I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel that I was successful. I was so used to being told no that I couldn't even feel it. And I remember when I saw it on TV, because in those days you wouldn't see something until months later. And then uh, after that, I, I, I lost, and I thought it would be funny to stamp my foot and walk off. <laughs> <laughs> Which everyone at the time thought was funny, but as the years have went on, and now they put it on the internet, uh, some people didn't get the joke, and there's <laughs> quite a, a bunch of interesting comments from Martin Lawrence fans. Oh, really? All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I have a, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, unkind. But, uh, but, but it was certainly funny and certainly it caused attention to it at the time. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm going to have to look that up after the show. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still doing stand-up and I, and I have a series that just dropped on Amazon called Smothered. Uh, it's about these two guys who have been in a relationship for 30 years who hate each other and can't afford to get divorced. And people can watch that at smotheredtv.com. So I'm still doing comedy in addition to doing dramatic things. I like to mix it up and just being creative and working with talented people. Yeah. Well, you joked there about wearing like uh, really uh, uh, colorful things so people wouldn't know you were gay and stuff, but oh, yeah. how has that changed over since the eighties? Um, oh my God, I, man, I, 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 to me, I wear polo shirts and khaki pants all the time now. <laughs> and then on the news, they said that white supremacists, wear, that's what they're wearing now. They're hiding. They're no longer yeah, they wearing. They say Hawaiian shirts, too, which uh, yeah, I was at a, a Black yeah. Lives Matter rally yesterday, and I didn't even think about it, but I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, and I was like, I hope no one thinks I'm here to, like, uh, I thought, how, how, could, how could this happen to me? I, 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 I thought I was wearing the most boring clothes. Bitch stole my look, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I think as the years go on, I don't have the same need. For the attention or the need to hide i just be myself and try to do the best job with every job that i can do and try to show up and serve the director or the writer of the project and find out where my piece is in to support what's going on that's what's so great about working with sam levine is that he really uh, had purpose and understood what was going on to the point where i could just sort of ride with him it was like he put his arm around me and we were like flying it, it felt really really great and when you work you with, with him before or no, no I'd, before? Never, I'd never met him or work with him. We work with some of the same people, mm -hmm. but uh, I'd never worked with him or met him before. Yeah. And uh, so it comes out the eighth on uh, video on demand. Uh, do you know where exactly or just all the major yeah, uh, Comcast spectrum Fios uh, direct TV, uh, Amazon prime, like for rent or purchase um, all like the, uh, the, 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 the purchase or rent um, sites right now. And then it's going to expand a lot. It'll be like, it'll be on like stars or showtime, something along those lines in a year from now. Um, and then hopefully like, you know, Netflix or something along those lines after that. Yeah. Yeah. But allow, a few, allow, allow a few pennies to trickle down first before we go to Netflix. Bad. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Unless Netflix buys you out, then you go to Netflix last, not first. Yeah, people oh. don't realize the more they watch it, the more we get paid. That's the way it happens now. Yeah. Right. And all these sites, I mean, everything, it's really true. The, the more people watch. So if you love uh, Tony and the Candyman, you will love him in this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you will. <laughs> you you will love him in this. I think that's yeah. it. Oh, he's amazing. That's I true. thought er you're really, everyone was, was great. But yeah. yeah. Uh, hats off to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can you can you talk at all about the, the upcoming Candyman? No. I won't put you on the spot. Not at all. It comes out Fair on enough. October 16th, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Is but, it uh, mortal's name? Was that Rob? Sorry, it's Tony, like, NDAs up the up the nose, probably right. <laughs> I'm sorry. NDAs up the nose, right? Yeah, totally up the nose and all kinds of side contracts and stuff. But it's yeah, gonna, yeah, you know, feminine. It's a feminine touch, so everybody's going to be. I mean, I, you know, I can't. Yeah, say much. it's very so, exciting. We're all very excited. Yes, and I'm okay. excited about Immortal. So please, I, yeah, I mean, Immortal is amazing. Subscribers. Tell everybody, tell your fan bases, let's get on board. Let's make this an indie hit of the year. Yes, please, people. Yeah. Tell your friends. It's a great movie. They all have a lot at stake with this. You know, it'll help enhance everybody's careers and, you know, and 
we keep doing the thing that we love to do the most collect pillows you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> it was a great great cast you know. shit. <laughs> it really felt like theater camp it felt like theater camp because after meeting everybody when you went to the screening when we opened at the screen film festival it was like all these people came who we'd not met and everybody had their like bubbles and everybody's bubbles went into other people's bubbles it was sort of wonderful it really right. was and everybody was so supportive and kind and yeah. And it's just, it's exactly the kind of thing that, you know, that I want to be a part of always is to work with people that really care about what they're doing and want to do the best possible within the constraints of what you're doing. Yeah, we've been blessed, folks. I mean, because sometimes you could have one bad egg that just disturbs the whole vibe, but we were on a time sensitive production. So I think everybody brought their A game. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the audience will bring their receptive game. <laughs> right. Which, uh, you know, for people out there, when you do watch a movie and you like it, uh, it does help to nice, uh, you know, talk about it and get the word out there, but also uh, uh, rate it on IMDb or Amazon or wherever it is, because it does help. Oh, tell your neighbor. Tell them stop yeah. being bored. Live for something. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Review yeah, I... Go on, sorry. Review us. You can review You can review people on Amazon. You can review people on IMDb. And if you, if you don't have anything nice to say, just keep it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, that's what your mom taught you. If you have nothing nice to say, oh, you... you don't know my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant gen in general. Right, right. <laughs> Everyone else's mom said that, except for Jason. Uh, did you have another question, uh, Trista? No, I uh, just I very much enjoy the film. Um, I guess you guys are going to probably want to tell everyone where people can follow the film and follow yourselves individually, right? Yeah. Um... Um, our publicist is like handling that. I wish I knew the answer to that right now. Um, we are on uh, Instagram, I believe, and like um, other oh. sites, right, Tony? I don't know. I okay, yeah. But uh, mainly just like um, look for us on the Being the Man platforms, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, where we're going to be reviewed, um, and uh, IMDb and everywhere else. There'll be a link for the movie on IMDb for sure. Either where they get it on so Amazon. Do you have a Twitter link yet or not? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not handling social media, but I'm sure there's no. All, everything's I'll look it up and I'll I'll add it to the description here. Thank right, you very thanks. much. Thanks. Of course. Yeah. Right. Appreciate it. And we're in weird times right now. So, uh, is ever what is everyone up to? Uh, I got the third Laker game coming on, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Fair right, enough. Right. So I'm gonna get my dribble on. Okay. All right. so, what, what what are they doing for the crowd? Do they have the uh like a, a virtual, virtual crowd? crowd going on? It must be hallucinatory. <laughs> if I was yeah. them, I wouldn't be smoking so much weed the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Your computer screen. Right, right, right. I, I I've been around you. You don't do anything like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Lindsay, by the way, too. Uh, actors in this, which were everyone is great. Uh, we didn't mention Marvin Peebles and. Tony's great in it and, and, and Dylan, but uh, you, you do a great job as well. And you know, uh, you should get a lot of recognition. Oh, yeah, she should. Thank you very much. Well, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Well, She's uh, terrific in it. Just terrific. Yeah, she's amazing. And I, you know, that's I, to work with Dylan Baker, you have to bring yourself, when you work with people that have had what I call their 10,000 hours, you got to bring yourself up. You got to, and if you can play on the same field and do as wonderfully as she did, you know, she's got her stuff going. Thank you very much. I've noticed the theme here. We all have theater backgrounds too. You know, I think that, you know, having to perform on the spot really comes in handy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the training. Mm -hmm. Everyone but me, but yeah. <laughs> we'll get you, we'll get you, Neil. We'll get you your big break <laughs> on stage here. I'm sure you have your 10,000 podcast hours, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, since 2005, hey. so it's probably more than that, but yeah. Yeah, but so you got your you got your hours in what you've done, yeah, so you've got it. And as uh, Trista said, uh, where can you follow each of you guys individually? Not your homes, but you know, online if people want to. <laughs> Unless you want to give out your home, I don't know, but I assume. Tony, you <laughs> Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Tony Todd 54, Instagram Tony Todd official. What's a 54? Um, uh, what's the significance of 54? My lucky number whenever I'm in okay. Vegas. Okay. All right. 54. Like, it's above the roulette wheel, though, right? I split it up. You use it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Cool. 
This there is a go. show, so I'm not going to get into everything, okay? <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, uh, <laughs> Rob um, on Instagram. And I'm uh, at Lindsay Machette on Instagram. Uh, it's me, it's jasonstewart.com, S-T-U-A-R-T. All my stuff is there. Instagram, LinkedIn, oh God, YouTube, Facebook, everything. I got it all going on. Very cool. Well, I appreciate everyone taking the, we both appreciate everyone taking the time out to talk with us and Immortal, really, not just because you guys are here. Yeah. I really, love, we both loved Immortal. We were texting each other because uh, I'm, I'm on the East Coast, she's on the West Coast and uh, we thought the movie was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you, you as well. Chester. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank Thanks, you, really nice to see you all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. God bless. Thank you. Nice to see people. Enjoy yeah. the Lakers How about game. that? Get out yeah. to the living room. <laughs> all right, yeah, and thanks everyone right. for watching. Yep. Okay, bye now. Bye. 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 bye.